All together, of course, you've got Germany taking on Spain and Portugal against France. We'll be looking ahead to Frank's side in that clash against Portugal later on in the show. But let's kick things off, shall we, with Spain against uh, Germany. An exciting tie and one that Sid Lowe has always oh, graced us with his presence. Thank you very much, Sid Lowe, for joining this uh, ahead of the game, which has got so many different subplots going into it. Just a reminder how both teams got here. Spain have really caught the eye. So impressive, of course, not only in the group stages, but that second half performance as well against Georgia. Meanwhile, for Germany, they started very, very well, didn't they? against Scotland and since then you feel they've started slightly but in the end it was a comfortable 2-0 victory against Denmark which sets up this brilliant clash against Spain which I think it's fair to say this could be a final. Yeah, and that's been the, the the basis of the things that the two managers have said. They've talked about this as a game that could potentially be a final. Although, of course, they're, they're both aware that after it, there will be more. Uh, I think they probably are the best two teams in the, in the competition so far. Certainly, Spain have been far better than any of, its, of us expected, including those of us watching them from a Spanish perspective, by the way. I think that's really, really... They've really taken us, and the, particularly the two wingers. And, and actually, it was interesting listening to, to Luis de la Fuente today talk about these as being two teams that are very similar in terms of a midfield that wants possession, in terms of wingers that are very, very quick, very, very direct, as teams that, that try to create a lot of chances and want to push themselves onto the other team. That when they do lose the ball, want to get the ball back very quickly and want to play as high as possible. At the same time, Nagelsmann today was talking about plans. And you don't normally get this from managers, talking about the way that he wants to stop Rodri, for example, getting possession, the way that he wants to stop Lamine Yamal running at them. And it was very striking that, that Nagelsmann today kind of projected this idea of a manager who's saying to people, I've got this under control. Of course, tomorrow we'll show whether or not he really does. Proper game, isn't it, Maka? Yes, two very, um, very impressive sides. Germany come out of the doldrums, hasn't he? Tony Kroos is back, as you mentioned before. Some lovely subplots. Spain have been outstanding to watch. They play with a real plan. Don Di Rodri, I think, is an incredibly gifted player, really makes them tick. I'm looking for, as you said before, what a wonderful day of football tomorrow. Forget England. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, That'll yeah, be a miserable yeah. Saturday. We've Let's got some, We've got some lovely football tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. And, and of course, part of that is you've got some great youngsters who, who've lit up this tournament. Obviously, Nico Williams, Lamine Yamal, you've got Florian Verts, you've got Musiala, and they're just so much fun to watch. And you, you look at the, these two Spanish players who have really caught the eye, and we follow yeah. La Liga, we know how good they are, but the fact that they've taken this now to the national team is something we mentioned England, some players can't do. Exactly, that's the, the, the main thing. The, the, the way they capable of uh, show their maturity at the age, uh, playing for the national team, and the pressure that you have is completely different than the, the, the club uh, game that you have week in, week out. It's, uh, you have to be above all the standards, and they already are. And uh, we were not expecting that from Nico Williams. Mm. I think Nico Williams surprised me a lot in a very good way. Uh, but in a Spanish team, you have to also add uh, Fabian Ruiz. I, I saw him playing for the League One with Paris Saint-Germain, mm -hmm. and uh, he hasn't been that good compared to what uh, I saw since the beginning of the tournament. So Spain in the middle of the park with Rodri, of course, and Fabian Ruiz, and on the side with the two young guys, they, they're very prepared to go very, very far. Don't forget Cucurella. Who you said, what was the quote that, Ch that, that went big in England about Cucurella? <laughs> I don't remember what I said, but I, 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 I discovered another player. I mean, what he does offensively... Worst defender in the world, I think you said. Worst defender in the world. That was yeah, said. yeah. Well, you know, maybe Spain the is that's not part of the world. That's only, that's only in the Chelsea shirt. Isn't yeah. It? yeah, no, no, but that, that, that was, a, it was at the moment. Yeah. At that moment, you know, I was disappointed by the, the and don't forget, it was 65 million, something like that, yes. uh, to, for, from yeah, Brighton, I think. Right, yeah. but, but what I see right now, I mean, the guy is unstoppable. What he brings offensively and helps Nico Williams to find some spaces, but also defensively, is great. And... Uh, and Spain was, they were very, very constant. They were consistent, sorry, all, ga all game long. They played, don't forget, they played Georgia, Albania, mm -hmm. Italy, and Croatia, which are not the best team in the world, uh, even Croatia at the end of the generation. But they showed consistency. Yeah. Comparing to Germany, where the second game and the third game, they started to show a little bit of tightness. We'll see. Yeah, we will indeed, Sid. And obviously, Nico Williams uh, is, I think it's fair to say, the star of the tournament so far. Yeah. 
He's been brilliant, hasn't he? He's been really brilliant. And, and actually, it's worth picking up on what Frank was saying there in terms of the surprise. Now, those of us who watch La Liga are not surprised that Nico is really good. We're not surprised that Lumine Yamal is really good. And, and although we're not watching watching the, the French league, we, we knew that Fabian could play because the Spanish national team has had a degree of faith in him before. But those three positions that Frank was pointing out, it's absolutely true that before the tournament, if you were asked to write down the Spanish starting eleven, you probably wouldn't have had Cuca de Yel in it. He certainly wouldn't have before the injuries to Balde and to José Luis Gaia. And even then, you would have probably had Grimaldo ahead of him. In the middle of midfield, the doubt was always about who would partner Rodri. And it might not have been Fabian. It might have been Mikel Marino. And up front, while we all knew that Lamine and Nico were going to play, I think most of us thought that one of them would. That he would risk one really dynamic winger and he would have the other winger as a kind of a ball playing winger that would come inside. Someone like Dani Olmo, for example, or someone like Mikel Oyarzabal, someone who would, who would maybe have a, a little bit more experience. And so those three players who were the players that might not have been in this starting eleven have all been absolutely phenomenal. And as you say, Nico Williams has been fantastic. I think the, the, the clarity with which he, he makes decisions has surprised us. I think we knew he was talented, but to take it to this level, and him and Lamine have without doubt been the kind of, if you like, the stars of the Spanish team, not just in terms of how they've played, but in terms of how they symbolise that idea that this is a fresh, dynamic, mm. more direct Spanish team than we've seen in previous tournaments. How, are you, how old are you, Maka? Like when you started travelling with Liverpool with the first team, 18. You, you, you're quite young. But yeah, you're 17, like, 18. Like Lamine Yamal's 16 and yeah. doing it. And we, know, we knew how great it was for Barcelona, but then to step it up and the game yes, in Spain. Been, he's been very direct. He can go both ways. He's quick, of course, very, very confident. I mean, Nico Williams has been the standout, standout player for me because, you know, he's at an unfashionable club. I know Bill Bauer, a great club, athletic club, wonderful stadium. But will they be able to keep hold of him now because he's suddenly jumped onto the world stage, everybody's looking at him. A lot more clubs with a lot more money than Athletic Club will be now circling for yeah. him because he's a young, vibrant, entertaining player who, um, who skips past people, and that's what people want to see, don't they? 50 million release fee as well. That's, that's, nothing, not, that's, that's nothing, not bad, that's is nothing it? nothing for the 21-year-old who's playing like this, is it? Uh, let's take a look at everyone's predictions, shall we? It's interesting, just one of our panel believe it will be Germany who will be going through, and that is Mr LeBeau. 3-2, Frank. You think it's going to be that open? Yes, uh, I give the advantage of Germany because they, they are the host. They, they play at home and it can make the difference. And um, again, I, I, as I mentioned, you know, Spain played against Georgia, Albania, Italy and Croatia. We are not the best team in the world. So I, it's going to be a real test for them to see if they, they move on to a, dif a different level. Because we didn't expect to see the Spanish at the, that level before the competition. We all put England, Portugal, France, Germany, but not the Spanish. So I want to see it. But I still believe that Germany at home will go till the end and even beat the French, so I say my prediction, but beat the English at the end. All right, good, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> stick that in for no Just reason. So you know. yeah, no, no, absolutely unnecessary. Uh, Sid, what, what's you the... Think England to get to the final? <laughs> well, you know, because oh, wow. I want them to be beaten by the wow. Germans. <laughs> Sid, what's the narrative around Germany coming into this tie? Well, from a Spanish point of view, the narrative is that this is a genuinely good team and that one of the things that was really interesting today was listening to how much Luis Lafuente talked about Germany as being similar to them in terms of a team that wants the ball, in terms of a team that attacks from the wings, in terms of a team that, that has a kind of a profile that's the same. It was striking from my point of view, at least, that he didn't talk about the things that make them different. Uh, and, and he was talking about this as being an absolutely a 50-50 game. There's a huge amount of respect for Germany. That said... It hasn't been lost on people that Spain haven't actually lost to the Germans since 1988. So they've done a pretty good run. Yeah, not bad at all. Goodness gracious me. Uh, that